I've never been a fan of a track with just a few corners. I've always loved tracks with many, many corners. This is the ultimate track with 800 corners. My name's Derek Bell and it's my very first time on the Togafario track in Sicily. My partner in crime is the Porsche 718 RS60 that actually won the Togo Florio back in 1960. This actual 718 was driven by Joe Bonnier and Hans Hermann. This car was one of the smaller engine cars actually in the race. It was against much bigger machinery, but because of its lightness, its handling, and the great driving ability of the two drivers, and the reliability of that little engine and strength of the chassis, it won the race. I don't think we all appreciate just what the Targa Florio means in the history of motorsport. Probably the greatest, hardest, most torturous race ever held in the world. This track was 72 odd kilometers around. Really, really torturous. And to the fans, the public on this magnificent island where they get something like a million people watching it, is part of their history and it's a major part of the history of motorsport. The 1960s 718 was a four-cylinder, normally aspirated air-cooled engine, a mid-engine car right in the middle of the car to give it perfect balance one end to the other. It was only 1600 cc. It was also only 170 horsepower. Quite spectacular when you consider how fast it went and the thousands of races that it won. It was really the culmination of a 10-year period of development from the 550 that we knew in the beginning with the little 1400cc engine with 110 horsepower through to 1960. Porsche never stands still. They develop cars over the years, just perfecting it all the time to get the perfect item. And I believe at the end of it all, this was it. And don't forget, that era was very, very competitive with all the other manufacturers coming in. This was a 1600cc engine. And you get out there like a David and Goliath and actually beat Goliath. And then, of course, we get to the aerodynamics or the shape of this car. You'll notice that the front is quite rounded, a lot more rounded and pointed for aerodynamic reasons. And it was a fractionally longer than the car before. Most tracks you drive on, the car has grip, has a certain grip to the track. You can adjust roll bars and springs and things. I don't think you can change these cars very much. In that period, 
period, I think you spent as much time off the road as you did on it. And the corners were so buried, there were rocks, there were potholes, the roads were narrow, and you couldn't really take big liberties with it the way you would if you were racing on a, a smaller track. I didn't think it would be as much fun to drive. You know, it's only 1600 cc, 170 horsepower, what's that? Once you get it on song, you get up to 7,000 plus revs, it was absolutely amazing. And the fact that you could brake so perfectly, flick it into a corner, put the power on, you just wanted to have the hell driven out of it. And once I'd sort of been around a few corners, I got the feel, the rhythm of the car, and it is incredibly light to drive. Uh, but it took me some time to sort of get completely confident with what I was doing, because I've never gone through so many hairpin bends in my life. I never imagined I'd ever drive this car. I never imagined I'd ever drive on the Targa Florio. And here was I having this opportunity to sort of step back in history, if you like, before my time with Porsche. When I realize and think about what Porsche has meant to me during my life and what he's done for me, um, I realize how lucky I was to even go back further before my actual period of Porsche and drive a car that created history back in 1960 and even before that. All our careers has gone on through the latest type of developments over the years to ground effects, electronics and all that stuff. And here I was stepping back in time to when my heroes drove. And um, I had a very special feeling that I can't really put into words, but it almost was choking me. And when I put it into first gear and slipped the clutch away without blowing the clutch, and without stalling it, just driving it up the road. And that feel of sort of, it's actually a feel of freedom because I was on my own on this amazing course, nobody around, and I was driving through corners that the greats had actually gone around those corners. And I kept reminding myself as I went around, you kept thinking I was on a bit of road. You go, no, you're not on just a bit of road, you're actually on the Tiger Florian course. It's amazing, and that's what this island does, that's what this track does for people, and what, of course, this car did. You must remember that the development from the 550 to the 718 was over a period of 10 years. And I think about it in relation to my career with Porsche. And in that time that I was there, they used to be developing stuff in the race cars. And sometimes I used to moan like crazy about the fact that here I am trying to be a racing driver and win races for you, but I was developing ABS or Motronic injection or whatever it happened to be. And they would just say, every race we do has to be the development of something to justify our racing program and put it forward to our road production. Hence, this car is in a collection, but the Porsche 718 legacy lives on.